Hey friends, it is Friday night. Welcome to the end of the week and the beginning of the weekend. It's 7.30 and so that means it's time for another Bible Bedtime Stories. So we are continuing our story tonight. We're reading again in the Jesus Storybook Bible. Remember Sunday we started way back in the beginning with creation. We heard the story of Adam and Eve. We heard about Noah. We heard about the Tower of Babel. And on Wednesday night, we heard about Abraham and Sarah and how God had promised them that they would have a child, even though they were really, really old. And they didn't believe him, and yet God kept his promise, and he gave them a son who is named Isaac. And tonight, we hear a little bit more about Isaac and his story. So from the Jesus Storybook Bible, tonight we're reading a story called The Present. God knew that his secret rescue plan could only work if Abraham trusted him completely. God had to make sure that Abraham would do whatever he asked him. So a few years after Isaac was born, God asked Abraham to give him a present. Abraham liked giving presents to God. He gave God his animals. They were called sacrifices. And they were a way to say, I love you to God. But this time, God didn't want a lamb or a goat. God wanted Abraham to give him something more, much more. He wanted Abraham to give him his son, his only son, the son that he loved, Isaac. Put the boy on the altar and kill him as the sacrifice. How could God want him to do such a terrible thing? Abraham didn't understand, but God knew, but he knew that God was his father who loved him. So Abraham trusted him, and early the next morning, Abraham and Isaac set off. They climbed the steep, stony trail up the mountain. Isaac carried the wood on his back, and his father carried the knife and the coals. <coughs> Papa, Isaac said, we have everything except we forgot the lamb for the sacrifice. God will give us a lamb, son, Abraham said. They built an altar and they laid the wood on top. Abraham asked his son to climb on top of the wood. Isaac didn't understand, but he knew that his father loved him. And so he trusted him. He climbed up onto the altar, and Abraham tied his boy to the wood. Isaac didn't struggle or try to run away. He just lay there quietly and didn't make a sound. Everything was ready, and Abraham took the knife. Tears were filling his eyes, and pain was filling his heart. His hand was shaking. He lifted the knife into the air. Stop, God said. Don't hurt the boy. I want him to live and not to die. I know that you love me because you would have given me your only son. Abraham felt his heart leap with joy and so he untied Isaac and folded him in his arms, and great sobs shook the old man's whole body, and tears filled his eyes, and for a long time they stayed there like that, in each other's arms, just the boy and his dad. And suddenly, Abraham saw a ram caught in some brambles, the sacrifice. God had given them what they needed just in time, and the ram would die so Isaac didn't have to. And so Abraham sacrificed the ram instead of his son. <clears throat> and as they sat there on the mountaintop, watching the embers of the fire die in the cool night air, the stars above them sparkling in the velvet sky, God helped Abraham and Isaac understand something. God wanted his people to live and not to die. 
God wanted to rescue his people and not to punish them. But they must trust him. One day, someone will be born into your family, God promised them. And he will bring happiness to the whole world. God was getting ready to give the whole world a wonderful present. It would be God's way to tell the world and all of the people, I love you. Many years later, another son would climb another hill, carrying wood on his back. And like Isaac, he would trust his father to do what his father asked. He wouldn't struggle. He wouldn't run away. Who was he? He was God's son, his only son, the son that he loved, the Lamb of God. I like that story about Isaac and Abraham. And it always surprises me a little bit how even though Abraham loved Isaac and waited for Isaac for years and years and years, even though he knew that God would do amazing things because God had promised him that, that his family would be like the stars in the sky or the sand on the seashore. Even though Isaac was the only son that he had and he loved him, he was willing to give him up for God. And so it makes me think sometimes about my life and about other people's lives. And think about the things that we would give up for God. What would we give up? Would we give up our time? Would we give up money? Would we give up our favorite toy? Would we give up spending time with maybe our favorite person or our video games to spend time with God? Would we give up whatever we think is most dear to us to be with God? For a lot of people, the answer is no. For a lot of people, there are things that get in the way of them spending time with God. And we've just spent a whole lot of time at home where we've had to be away from everything that we love, from sports, from school, from our friends, from our family. But in this time, we haven't had to be away from God. We've still had the opportunity to spend time with him, to talk to him in prayer. But finally, this weekend, we are going to have a chance to come back together as a family, as a big extended family, and to worship God together. And so I hope a whole bunch of you are planning on coming to worship on Sunday. Remember at St. Paul, it's at 9.30 and it's at 11 o'clock. And the plan is to be outside as long as it doesn't rain. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Because we will get to be together and we will get to let nothing come between us and God. And so I hope a whole bunch of you are going to be there on Sunday morning. I hope I get to see you and say hello to you and just spend time worshiping God with you on Sunday morning. And so I'm looking forward to that. Make sure you come and see me if you're there. I will be there, I promise, for both services, and I can't wait to see you all. So make sure you come and say hello to me. Tonight, I think all that's left to do is for us to say our prayers, and then we will head off to bed or to whatever else we're doing tonight, and we will be able to see each other on Sunday morning. So would you please pray with me? Dear Jesus, Thank you for today and for all of the amazing things that you give to us each and every day. We thank you that you trusted God, that you listened to God, and that you came to earth to save us. We know it couldn't have been easy and we know it couldn't have been fun. But because you love us, because you wanted us with you forever, 
You were the lamb that was sacrificed to save us. Help us to remember to not let anything come between us and you. In your name we pray. Amen. So as you head off to bed and as you head into the weekend, I hope you will make plans to join me on Sunday morning for church and then Sunday night for Bible bedtime stories. We're going to keep the story going and we'll hear a little bit more about Isaac on Sunday. Have a great night, everybody. Have a great weekend and we will see you on Sunday. Bye.